My Smexy, ladies and gentlemen, we finally have the second trailer for The Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver 1 and 2 Remastered. I am, of course, here to provide you with all the good stuff, so any further mentions of additional features or just new information in general will be covered here today, and of course we will be perving hard on the enhanced graphics and we'll do fun comparisons between the original Soul Reaver games and what we are getting now. Bundle is coming out on all platforms and Steam, so Switch fans, Sony fans, Xbox fans, PC fans, you're covered wherever. Launching on December 11th in Australia, your time zone is likely a little bit different. If you have not seen the original video on the Soul Raver Remastered announcements, I highly recommend you check out that previous video of mine first, because a lot of new game features and announcements were included in that. We currently have hit 82,000 views on that one, my highest ever on this channel, and once again, I am blown away to connect with so many fellow Smexy gamers. Alrighty, enough with the intro. You know why you are here. Let's get straight to it, where we will look at the graphic comparisons, and I'll also randomly drop new confirmed information about the games themselves, so be sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss out. So, let's start with the big one, and I'm sure I will butcher the name, but Milkaya? While the graphical enhancements between the original Soul Reaver game and what was shown in the first trailer was extremely impressive, with a completely brand new 3D model and new texture work, bringing this scary creation to life. There was one consistent complaint in my comments section, and that was that things were too bright. A lot of discussion around overexposure and saturation of colours. This guy was no exception. Well, if you have ever wondered if developers and publishers check out videos like these, the answer is yes they do. Have a look at the adjusted version of Melkaya. I'll read a quote from the devs while you take that in. So, while I continue to butcher the name I'm sure and I quote, Melkaya received a full texture overhaul with darkened skin and a slimmer body feel. The bones and skeletal mapping are now more realistic and gory and his eye colour was adjusted to match the original look. Suddenly, we look like we are in a world filled with horror and the tone is very different. This bodes well for a number of positive reasons. Firstly, they took the criticism and did something with it. But no, they heard the fans and made the adjustments. Secondly, it doesn't take much to change the tone and I was never concerned. I kept telling my fellow gamers last time in the comments section that simple adjustments would go a long way. I'm sure we can adjust the brightness even further by simply using the in-game options. Alrighty, a lot of bosses were shown, so let's keep the excitement going and look at the next graphical improvements made. Okay, yet another name I'm sure I will butcher, Zephon. I, I, I don't know where that accent came from, but, and I quote uh, from the team again. Zephon was too desaturated, so we've completely repainted his face. That's what they said, that's the quote, but let's have a look at our, let's have a look ourselves. The trailer itself did not have a comparison, but don't you worry, it's not exactly hard using Google and doing it myself. So on the left we have the original version, and on the right we have the new. Once again, the visuals are worlds apart, but in the best kind of way. We can see details like never before and truly understand how the original designers envisioned these enemies. Observing the bones on the outside and the fragile flesh in between is really striking. The teeth, absolutely terrifying, and even the tongue itself has been remade, that's attention to detail. I like the thing in the centre of its head that really stands out and was much more subtle in the original design. Overall, this is a smexy upgrade and this Soul Reaver Remastered bundle continues to impress. Alrighty, let's talk about some new gameplay features. As I said, we will jump between the new tasty info and the graphics randomly, so be sure to watch the video until the end. So the last time I covered this remaster bundle, I confirmed that a map and a compass has been added to the game. A feature I strongly welcome, as I am the type of person who gets lost all the time in my games, and Soul Reaver was no exception. While I celebrated this, more hardcore fans were concerned, and once again, 
Seems like you were heard, ladies and gentlemen. It has now been officially confirmed you can toggle all the assistance options. So if you want extra game hints, if you want the map, if you want to use the compass, it is completely up to you. So I don't want to hear any more complaining about that. All right, it's up to you. You want the extra assistance, it's there. You don't want it, it is gone. More was also revealed in how the compass will operate as well. So the compass will try and point in the general direction you should probably be heading off towards. Another completely new feature, and once again I do quote, we also included a collection tracker for any health and energy power-ups so that you know if you've gotten all of the collectibles within each area. This is all really good stuff. Extra assistance for those of us who would still get lost even with a GPS. Yes, I am indeed that guy. I do somehow still get lost on the road even with the GPS, but also the option to play 100% old school and have no such assistance is there for you guys as well. Ladies and gentlemen, seems we are at the halfway point of the video, so my usual quick reminder that if you feel video games are about escapism and not activism, please please subscribe right now as you're watching to help empower voices such as my own that just want video games to be games, no more, no less. And if you want to support me further, I do now have channel memberships where you can get a cool badge beside your name and custom emoji like these. Anyways, thanks for hearing me out and back to the Soul Reaver Remastered video, we have much more graphics perving and features to discuss. I'm quite hyped for this one. Another quote from the team, and let me butcher yet another name, Rehab's head has been remodeled. So the eyes now have a reddish glow, which gives him a menacing look. We've also altered the fangs to look more vampiric and made his skin color a little more gray. Once again, the original is on the left and the new to the right. The actual 3D model and texture work has been improved once again. The water looks exactly the same as before. Would have liked a bit of something there, but it's a small thing no big deal, I'm just a graphics perv and I like it when water looks as good as possible. But let's zoom in to the faces, right? I have a separate screenshot I made for that as well because this is where the biggest differences can be seen. This really pops. Anyone still saying things like only the textures have been upscaled and everything is exactly the same is not paying close attention to what is going on here. When you create or improve 3D models as much as these guys have, the old texture no longer aligns properly with the 3D mesh. It all needs to be redone and this much more detailed head model is proof of that. The only complaint for this part is the teeth are all the same length on, on the top and the bottom in the new version, but with the old version if you look it seems you just have massive on top teeth. Feels a little bit different, but once again, zooming in did not disappoint. On to the next boss. Yet another quote so we feel fancy and let me butcher yet another name. Damach's armor is now a lot dirtier and has patches of mold and blood all over it, considering he was impaled for centuries. All right, so once again, night and day difference, and it's nice to take in the details that was not so obvious before. For example, in the newer version, you can see he is wearing chain mail underneath as you can see on his arms. I could tell before he was wearing armor, but specifics like this, well, the hardware of the golden times could not give us such clarity to always be able to tell. All these improvements are filling in the gaps between my imagination and what was actually portrayed on screen. Also remember, you can toggle in real time between the old graphics and the new. That should prove a lot of fun and that they have not actually shown us the photo mode yet. So I expect there will be at least one more trailer between now and launch to show off that feature with the photo mode and maybe some other surprises are in store as well. Lastly, let's have a look at the man himself, Kane, and the final quote. There we go, I can pronounce the name <laughs> correctly, Kane. There we go, I know I'm actually saying that correct. Back to the quote. The models for Kane in both Soul Reaver 1 and Soul Reaver 2 needed to be completely redesigned to mitigate textural issues. With the increased polygon count, we felt it was important to bring his look a lot closer to the Kane we got to see in the original FMVs, so in other words, the, um, the cutscenes. 
back to the quote, which was a lot more detailed and showed more or less what the original intent was for the character. The original model in Soul Reaver 1 was especially limited, so now both games have a cane that looks consistent between the two titles. End quote. See, it's exactly what I've been saying. When you do this much improvements, you have to change a lot of things. You do a lot more modeling, you do a lot more texturing. It isn't simply, let's upscale some old textures and call it a day. A lot more is being done here. Anyway, back to this last graphics comparison. Well, you have to love extra detail in these remasters, right? I never realized in the original, that dark stain on Kane's chest was not dried blood, but an actual scar. Improvements are everywhere, but Kane does not look unrecognizable. So the team did a great job of honoring the original, and let's put the Kane from the pre-rendered cutscenes now into the actual game. Looks pretty close to that original version, if, if I have to say so myself. Only thing I can point out is I think the scar was larger before, but other than that, in-game graphics finally matching the pre-rendered cutscenes we grew up with, and imagine that somehow our games could someday look close to it? We are there and it is a very exciting time. If you liked, subscribed or went the extra mile and became a member, thank you all so much. God bless you all, take care. And let's get excited down below in the comment section just like last time. I had a lot of fun connecting with my fellow Smexy gamers, getting excited about- Okay, bye.